Hey folks, how's it going? Hope you passed a Merry Christmas. Sadly, the Grumble Fest livestream was held at a bit of an unfortunate hour for me, so I'm going to have to play catch up. Looks like day 1 was dedicated a bit more to Versus and Relink, with this last one getting a new trailer showcasing a couple of new bosses and a Bahamut segment that looks very similar to the Final Fantasy XVI Acons battle. Honestly, I'm all here for it. February can't come soon enough. The news segment opens with Versus and a new rotation for free-to-play characters, this time including Six, Vira and Anila. Then they just slapped Yukichi in the game as a new lobby avatar, and followed the announcement with three more additions, a girl from Umamusume and two unmistakable silhouettes, Pecorine from Preconne and Eris from Shadowverse. The lobby avatars are cute and all, but we'll hear for the juice, which comes with the reveal for the new character pass. First in line is going to be Lucilius, coming out on January 16th, looks like he'll be mostly using his floating swords in combat while also having to manage some sort of stack mechanic. The next trailer though caught a lot of people by surprise. How are we getting a collab already? And to be at that! Not only she looks amazing, they're also delighting us with yet another rendition of her Automata theme. It'll be released in February and will also come with 2B and a 9S skin for Jita and Gran in the Gacha game. It doesn't say it's console exclusive. I really hope it's not console exclusive, because Jita looks perfect. Afterwards, it'll be Vayn and Beatrix's turn. There's literally six neurons in this picture and they might not all be firing. Still, this kind of closes the circle when it comes to the base knights as well as the society members, unless they want to start adding Arthur and Modred as an Ice Climbers type dual character, or Lamorak, or Gawain, or Florence. On the society side, I'm still holding on to the hope to see Ilsa released since she's a dual wielding gun character, but I think Isaac and Gwyn might be a bit of a stretch. When it comes to the other two slots, the list is hella long. Maybe start getting the accordance in. Feather would be a nice Fisher Cuff character and eventually lead to Fiorito, Cupitan, and Tico. Or maybe a caster. If Magisa were to get a 3D model, she would break the internet. I think Skatasha would also look amazing, and of course I'm always partial to my drafts. Fidil, Razia, Galleon, Eliza would make my wallet fly by how fast it swings flap. And speaking of drafts, Narmea is about to get her Black Butterfly skin from the Premium Battle Pass. After announcing the April Fool's Quatre as yet another avatar, and a few tournaments for next year, including Evo Japan 2024, where Versus is going to be a main title, it's time to move on to Relink. Starting with its theme song, Good Night, Good Morning. Do you still remember the day we thought away? I knew Now had a pretty good voice, but I didn't know she could sing in English. This was a very nice surprise and I can't wait for the full version. The game's launch is approaching rapidly and all they've shown were a few new bosses and a couple more enemies. They somehow managed to make a Harving look menacing. That Reign of Swords looks terrifying. At this point, Lilith is the only one we haven't seen combat of and they might be saving the best for last. When it comes to the cast, we know there was one extra slot open before release and I was predicting to see another caster here. I would have preferred to see someone who's not in Versus 2, so my picks were between Magisa, Lena, Lily, maybe Zalamilina as well to add another Harvin too. But it looks like they wanted to play it safe and they went with Cagliostro. I guess a keg is fine too. In better news instead, new DLC characters will start becoming available next April. The first slot is going to Siete, and the second one is going to Song. Long-range characters in action games can sometimes end up being a bit too safe and boring, but it's going to take a literal divine intervention to prevent me from picking her in every single quest. Before the actual release on February 1st, Relink will also get a demo in January and another showcase stream on the 11th. Also, starting from March 13th, they'll be selling the OST, and the Grand Blue Fantasy soundtrack never disappointed. After a few more on-stage shenanigans and them literally rolling in screens for the Hololive girls, it's time for the Grand Blue Fantasy news. 
and when we open like this. You know things are going to get hype. The second SSR release on December 29th, Flash Fest, is going to be Tira, and then we have the new Zodiac for the Year of the Dragon. Sweet mother of memories that is one tall draft. Or is she? We do have half dragon and dragon youths in the game, so we'll have to wait for confirmation about her race. Still, Hyra's proportions look a bit off. I'm not one to complain about the bountiful bosom, but she looks a bit too top heavy, as if she left her bottom in 2023. Their cheeks not check out from the hotel or something? When I first brought it up, someone mentioned Fedil, but she was literally just too dumb to realize that rough women were only three quarters of the height she picked. Also, everything about Fedil is massive, so her proportions still check. Aira, I don't know. Hopefully she'll look better in her uncapped part. As per usual, January's 5-star uncapped will go to the oldest Zodiac without one, and this year we are literally getting married and eloped with Katura. Sayonara, Esta Lucia. Next, a couple of notes about the winter campaign. Special lines on login, plus Christmas messages from each teammate down to January 16th. This was followed by Delifords' sound event being added to the side stories halfway through next month, while Storm and Rank's mercenary life will follow suit on February 8th. After the current Divine General Assembly, the next event rerun will be the Dragon Blood War on February 2nd. In the meantime, we'll be battling over which topping is better on sushi in a quick campaign that also finally brings some Makura content after a year of silence. The skin is free, already unlocked, and also extra cute. 2024 will open with the new Tira event and will be followed by the Fire Favorite Unit and Fight. Waifu bosses are back on the menu, this time with a new box item as well as added weapons. Maybe a couple more SRs to add to Pengi and Nish. Still related to the United Fight, starting in April, we'll get a skin for the main character that will change its appearance based on how many honors we manage to farm. Honestly, a pretty cool idea, and I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, they won't go crazy with the requirements. Late January, we'll see the release of the Alanan Arkarum Gated event, just in time for the Guild War, with its usual sandbox bonuses, fate episodes, and a new EX pose. This is of course in preparation for the actual 5 star cap which will follow, both for him and Katselia. Alanan looks like he'll give all allies a 2 hit new Konoto attack after being swapped in, as well as a damage amp. Street King stocks keep rising. Katselia, on the other hand, gets a nuke whenever the ally with the highest charge bar gets more, plus a 2 times damage taken amplified for the enemy. Following that up with a stackable boost to attack, a heal, and no longer consuming charge bar for his passive. Next up we have the EMP skills for 31 characters, which are already in the game and I'll have to check up on later. And then we move on to the Winter Sky Scope missions, complete 100 of them for one more sand. Thankfully they're adding more and more ways for us to get these other than just grinding Ravens and the world, but most endgame now seems to require it and it looks like they will never be enough. Then details on the roulette. We're back to the standard one, but with a small chance for a 200x. This year, instead of the Excalibur, they're giving away one Primal Summon of choice and one Seraph Summon of choice. The pickup can be delayed, so try and wait out if you can. When RNG is involved, you never know. The Primal Peak is already up, while the Seraph Peak will be available on the 31st. Both of them will be available until January 7th, so there's plenty of time to finish your roulette rolls. Next up, a little bit of a spoiler for the 10th anniversary update. Looks like when it comes to Rise of the Beasts, they're done releasing new skins, so instead they will be adding 4 new farmable characters. I'm a bit disappointed that we might not get the Huang Dong and Chilin skins though, but that was it for day 1. Honestly, pretty good news all around. As for day 2, I just want to take a second to let you all appreciate Fiorito's VA. Looks like she was the inspiration for the character and not the other way around. As for the news, the stage is immediately lit up by Zeta's grand version. Finally, we're getting our society grants. 
She should be in the January leg fest, so keep an eye on the roulette when the banner resets, you might get an extra spin on her release banner. Zeta was not alone though, as Dirt finally gets out of their slump with Grand Uriel. Maybe it's time to finally fill that 10 out of 10 slot that's been empty for so long. As for the summons, we're back to triple zero with Lucilius and Sandalphon. Then we're on to the anniversary skins, this year for Althea, Iwia and Lich. <laughs> My smelly need can't be this cute. They'll be available from December 31st to January 7th, before going away until the next year, at which point they'll become permanent the same way Cassius's, Fedil's and Seti's New Year skins are about to be. On January 26th, we'll get more Ultimate Masteries for Yamato, Reddit Buster, Cavalier and Masquerade, while in February, Chaos Ruler and Yamato are going to merge in the new Tier 5 class on Myoji, a new Dagger and Sword debuff type class that uses talismans to weaken the enemies and strengthen themselves, while looking pretty damn cool to boot. February will also see the release of a new ultra difficult raid, but it has a face we know all too well already. Silius is about to get recycled as a 6 man V2 fight on the same difficulty as the Hexa raid. The raid will bring a new uncapped levels for the Dark Opus weapons, letting them reach level 250 and adding new pendulums to the shop. Looks like the uncaps will follow the Summon Transcendent steps and by buying the Lucilius vs DLC, you get enough mats to get one to level 230. Then it's finally time to announce the next collab. With to be getting versus, surely it'll be... My Hero Academia. That's a bit of a surprise. It begins on January 12 and I can't really say I'm a fan, but the lack of the Muscle Bunny Girl troubles me deeply. Hopefully they're just keeping her as a surprise as a saw for the second half of the event. Next, we're back to the 10th anniversary announcements, starting with more new missions to help people catch up with their grids, new awakening levels for more grand weapons, and summon transcendence levels. Coming in March, Magna summons will be able to be uncapped step by step up to level 250, they will get better skills and two new illustrations, but the uncaps will still cost cents. 5 per summon. Sure, they'll come out in March and the world drops them a bit easier compared to Ravens, but 30 cents? Just eviscerate me already and be done with it, Jesus. Magna summons won't be alone with the Transcendents either, as Primals will follow suit as well. Instead of sands, they will require Primal Anima, which you can only obtain by reducing one of the summons. I really hope you've been holding on to your dupes, either that, or it's time to pray to Gatchap in for more. That's a bit of a sour note to end on, and there was no mention of the Magnetary Raids that are supposed to come out on the anniversary. I guess those and the relative weapons will only be revealed on the 10th anniversary livestream. Still, lots and lots of work to do until then. The Grand Blue Fantasy Fest ended as always with all hands on deck and the usual teaser for the big anniversary event. Last time it was Naked Dragons, this year it's just Grand Gita, Lyria and a Doe. It feels like they've been speedrunning at the end of the main story quest for the last couple of updates and that might actually just be Estalusia. Still, we'll have to wait and see. Until then, thanks a lot for watching, let me know which updates you're looking forward to the most and See you soon. Ciao.